Hey everyone, it is Tuesday and I have had a really good start to my week this week, which has not been the case for most of January, I will admit, but I think a lot of people have been in the same boat. It's been a really strange start to the year. And yesterday was cleaning day. I just totally focused on getting my house back into shape. I don't know what happened this month. It was really needing a good deep clean. And today I am thinking about just setting up my meals, um, my freezer, my fridge cleaned up a bit. So I'm actually going to head out to Costco and pick up a few things. And when I get back today, I'm hoping to get some of my journals organized, take a look at my knitting. I have some knitting updates I wanted to share. And so I just thought it would be a really good time to pick up my camera and share a few things with you. I also just painted my nails and I am obsessed with this color. It's another London Town polish. It's a beautiful bright red. Can't remember the name. I will put it down below. Um, I tried to remember it and of course I've forgotten. So I'm going to head out, pick up a few things, drop off a package for shipping, and then I will be back and share a whole bunch of things that have been inspiring me, things that I'm working on, and um, I'm looking forward to it. from Costco mostly. I made myself a sandwich and ate my lunch and I'm just making myself a coffee which I'm really looking forward to. And I wanted to mention that I got a lot of comments that are very very kind about how organized I am and I noticed over the holidays and vlogmas I got a few that were maybe from people that were struggling a bit with whatever's going on and managing day-to-day -day stuff. And I just wanted to point out that yes, sometimes I am really organized. I love getting things in its place. I love decorating. I love cooking for my family. But I just wanted to make sure that even though you all probably know this, I think it's nice to hear it once in a while, that I am a human too. And there are days that my house is very messy there are days that I don't know what to cook and I either just make a frozen pizza or a quick spaghetti or we do takeout because Glenn does not cook and so when he wants to help, he always offers to um, to order something in because he's just not a cook. So there are times <laughs> where I just don't feel like it. I'm overwhelmed and I can't keep up with stuff. But I don't pick up my camera during those times and I feel like I'm turning things around. The first few weeks of January were quite like that. I was tired. There's a lot to do with the kids for school, just wrapping up their quadmester. Lots of help um, to be given there and I had some shop updates and the house was a mess. And so I just felt like yesterday I woke up and I wanted to get everything in order again. And I just had this little space of time and energy that I took advantage of it. So that's all I'm doing. I don't want anyone to feel like their house isn't clean enough or they don't cook enough for their family because I get it. And um, we all struggle with some of those things sometimes. I know I do. So. I'm just really in this mode of, I got my whole house pretty clean yesterday, most of it. Bathrooms, cabinets, my oven, like just everything really needed a good clean. 
I've stocked up on a bunch of stuff from Costco, so there's lots to eat, healthy snacks. Um, I also was just packaging up some roasts and meat that I had purchased and I needed to split it up to put it in the freezer. So I've been doing all of the things that I know helped me get back on track yesterday and today. I'm feeling a little bit more like I have a handle on life. And one of the other things that I really like to do when I'm feeling this way is bake something for the kids that's easy to just grab whenever they have the munchies in the afternoon or after dinner at night. So I have some overripe bananas. I have a new recipe that I wanna try and I'm going to share with you. And I'm gonna have my coffee and do that next. My oven is preheating, my coffee is ready. And I'm not sure if you noticed when I made my coffee, but I pulled out my old drip coffee machine just yesterday and I have been enjoying it so much. Glenn has been working at home ever since March, whenever they started the lockdown. And we have been going through Nespresso pods like crazy. I have been exclusively using my Nespresso for a few years because I was really the only one drinking coffee at home. And it didn't make sense to make a big pot of coffee for just me in the mornings. But our new routine since Glenn is home and enjoying coffee too, is I set the auto brew function at night. And when I wake up in the morning, the coffee is already brewed. It makes the house smell wonderful. And I make enough so that both him and I can have a big cup of coffee. And there's a little bit extra too, if we wanna to top it up or if he wants a second cup in the morning, which he sometimes does. And then in the afternoons, I will make myself and him, if he wants one, an espresso. And it just makes so much more sense not to be using four Nespresso pods a day and it's much more economical. And I am going to enjoy my coffee and get this banana bread going. I found a new recipe or new to me recipe on the alexandracooks.com website. I have a couple of recipes that I've made all of my life for banana bread, but when I saw this one on her website and she has a video for it, I just really, really wanted to make it. I have been loving her recipes. She is Alexandra Stafford from the Bread Toast Crumbs cookbook that I shared over Vlogmas. This is the book that I made the chocolate panettone from and it was excellent. Last week, I made her famous peasant bread. It was also a huge, huge hit and you can find this recipe on her website. It was super easy. It's a no need bread and everyone loved it. I also made a recipe she has for lemon ricotta loaf. I made two of those last week. I made an orange and a lemon one. We all gobbled it up. And so I was just looking through some of her other recipes and I saw this one from Mrs. Meyer's Sweet and Moist Banana Bread. And even though I love the recipes I usually make, I just couldn't resist trying another one of hers because like I said, they are really, really good recipes. And if you enjoy cooking and you enjoy watching videos, I have been loving her YouTube videos. She doesn't have a ton, but she has videos of her actually making a lot of her recipes and she doesn't talk in them, but you can kind of hear the sounds in the kitchen and some of it sped up. They're wonderful. I wish she had a lot more because I think I've watched pretty much all of them over the last month or so. So I would highly recommend her website. She is really, really good for reliable, delicious recipes. And I am just going to make this banana bread so that we have something to munch on for the next couple of days if it lasts that long.
banana breads are in the oven and they take an hour to bake. So I have a little bit longer to wait. And even though I remember sharing some of my dining room updates with you right after Christmas, I think it was my New Year's vlog, I wanted to come back and share again because I got a new carpet and I'm completely in love with it and I'm so happy with how it totally completes this room. I've been wanting a carpet in here for many, many years. We've been in this house, what is it? Maybe 16 years now, I think. And we have changed this room over and over again. I think this might be our third or even our fourth dining room table, which sounds really excessive, but most of them have been secondhand, except for this one. And Glenn is quite gifted with Craigslist and Kijiji. And when I say that, I do not say it lightly because he is kind of a master at finding deals. Everyone that knows him in, in our lives knows this about him. We've even had friends say, look, I'm looking for something. Can you find me on Kijiji? Because he just has a knack. It's like a gift. And I've been so lucky that I can just let him know if there's something I'm looking for. Um, even if it's specifically a pottery barn this or um, I can't remember some of the other stores that I've done done that with, but he can find anything. And I could probably do an entire YouTube video on things around my house that are from Kijiji and Craigslist because of Glenn. The carpet's not one of them and the table's not one of them. This table is actually from West Elm. It's the Emerson table. I get a lot of questions about it. It's gorgeous, but I just fell in love with this one and had to have it. But we've had so many different tables in here and um, finally got the carpet to go in the room perfectly because I know this table's not going anywhere. The chairs in there are from Craigslist. The beautiful silk curtains in here are actually from Craigslist or Kijiji, one of them, I don't know. And Glenn found them, I wasn't even looking. They are silk, custom made, fully lined, absolutely gorgeous. And the woman that had them made for her home just didn't think they fit her home anymore. So we lucked out with that. That cabinet in the back that has worked out so well for us is from Ikea and he found it in the as is department. And one of the reasons I loved this carpet so much is because of the colors in it and how it tied into the yellow cabinet. So there's baby blue and navy blue and that mustardy golden color, which I think is so pretty. So I've been really enjoying the carpet in here. It just makes it so much more cozy and complete when I come in here in the mornings because this is where I've been trying to come and spend some time with my planners and my journals. And even though I don't do it every single day, I have been doing it quite a bit and I don't know, but this carpet just really completes the whole room for me. Now I feel like walking around the house and showing you all the other things I can think of because I know one of them. I don't know if this room is a bit messy, but this incredible, um, this incredible couch was from Kijiji and it's actually a designer couch that was way out of our price range and Glenn found it. Some businessman in downtown Toronto bought it for his home and he was never home, never used it. And so we lucked out with that too. All of our bedroom furniture, same thing. It was in someone's beautiful guest room and they decided to change that. Um, James's Pottery Barn bunk beds, Kijiji. I could go on, I'll stop. But I also wanted to share some of my packages that came for stationary supplies and things like that in the last week because I usually order a few of these things um, in January, it's kind of when I'm getting all my planners set up and deciding what I'm using and just looking at my supplies and seeing what I need. When I was setting up my planners and journals for the new year, I placed a couple of orders with some of my favorite shops and I will share some of that with you. And this is what I am currently using. I shared my 
Hobonichi A5 cousin in my last video, so I won't share too much more, but I have been really enjoying it and I've been keeping up with my daily pages really well. I don't journal in them every single day. I actually prefer sitting once or twice a week, twice is probably better, and doing a few pages at once. I just kind of get into it and really enjoy the time and print pictures, but I'm not able to do it every morning or every night. And so that has been a really good. And I've been incorporating the Hobonichi Weeks into my planner setup this year. I've used a Hobonichi Weeks for the last few years, but kind of fizzle out after a few months. And it's been mainly for business stuff. I put shop notes, um, just things I need to order and keep track of and YouTube updates and whatever I can think of for my shop is usually in a Hobonichi Weeks. But I really wanted to use it to the fullest and I've been trying to figure out some new things to do with it and finding a lot of videos and Instagram accounts to um, kind of research that. So if you look up the hashtag Hobonichi Weeks and scroll through it, you can find lots of inspiration and that's what I've been doing. And I decided to order a new cover for it. I've never really had, um, I may have had a leather one once, but I've always wanted one of the Hobonichi covers that has a zipper and you could actually use it as a wallet as well. And I love this print. I actually have this cover for my A5 and I alternate them and I just thought it was so pretty. But you can put change in here and money or bills in there. There's card slots at the back. It's just super compact and um, really, really pretty. So like I said, I'm still figuring out how I really want to settle down on using it. But it has monthly spreads and then it has your weekly spread on the left side or the left page and the right side has a blank page. And then towards the end, there's a whole bunch of blank pages. So I haven't quite settled on how I wanna use these pages just yet. And I've been trying different things each week to see what I like best. I'm still not quite there, but there are elements that I'm going to take from this and carry on with. I do like keeping sort of a, a daily, um, task in the daily sections. I've been doing a meal plan in one column just to kind of keep me on track of what we're eating that week. And I saw this on, I think it was Lindsay Scribble's uh, YouTube channel. She puts in a daily highlight and I really liked that. So it's kind of like finding a gratitude in each day and just noting it in a little section over here. And then on the right side where I have a lot more space, I'm putting my weekly tasks and goals. And I might play around with some tracker stuff at the bottom too, but I'm still really trying to figure out um, what works for me. I haven't even set this one up yet. I might do that tonight. And then this one will be one that I will sort of keep closer to me throughout the day. It'll go up to my workspace with me and I can keep notes and keep an eye on my to-dos. It'll be in the kitchen with me, whereas this one is a lot bigger and I don't carry it around as much. It's a little bit more of an art journal for me right now. So I'm playing around with those two systems and so far I'm really liking it. I just need to figure out um, how I really want to use my Hobonichi weeks. I am talking so much in this video. You guys are going to be so tired of hearing me, but I really want to share some of the beautiful stationary bits and pieces that I got this week. And I often get asked about where I get some of it, so I really want to share. So my first order was with Wonder Pens. Uh, you can find them online, and I'll put links to all of these shops down below. But I ordered the Hobonichi Weeks cover from them. So beautiful. I usually get most of my fountain pens from them as well. I ordered this really cute rubber stamp that I thought would be good to put in the date, like the number date, and then any notes that I wanted to. And I ordered some stickers and some cute little erasers from them, but I've already tucked them away. And um, I did share them on Instagram. They are all so adorable. 
Then I placed an order with Jet Pens, and um, they are in California. It's a lot more expensive to ship to Canada right now, and um, I was desperate because I've been looking for these index clips for quite some time, and they're sold out everywhere else. They are the Midori brand, and they're just these really thin brass index clips that you can put on your pages in your notebooks. So I really liked that. I've been wanting them for a while, and while I was ordering, I noticed these ones as well, also by Midori, so I just popped those in my cart. They're super cute, and I think these ones will probably go in my weeks, and then I might use these in my um, A5. And I've been meaning to try this glue for a while. I saw my friend Maria using it, and I noticed it on the Jet Pens website, so I haven't even opened this large one yet. I've been using this smaller one, and I have to say, I love it. I've been going through all the glue sticks in my house, and they're kind of sticky and gummy. They're like kids' glue sticks. And so I got those, and I'm really happy with them. And also from Jet Pens, I ordered the Sig Clean Color Dot Markers. So I've only done a few swatches in my Hobonichi so far. I don't really know... Um, how much I like them yet, but I thought they were fun and that they would probably be really good for some of my lists in my weeks. And the last package is from Paper Plus Cloth, which is also a store in Toronto that I really love. Um, it's a beautiful shop with such unique products from all over the world. And I ordered something that I saw. Oh my gosh, she always sends. Ro always sends the most beautiful little thank you notes in her packages, and I'm putting that in my Hobonichi for sure. But she had these little, um, they're still on the website actually, the last time I checked they were. She had these little sets. So this one I think was called the Sticker Lovers or the Sticker Set, and it came with this little album, which I find so cute. Kind of reminds me of sticker books when I was a kid, even though this one is a little bit different. And it has these clear plastic sleeves in it that will fit most of these stickers. And so I wanted a whole bunch of stickers for my planners this year, and I thought this would be perfect to just order the kit. It came with this little booklet. It came with a whole bunch of these. Um, I know I added one or two to my cart, so I'm not exactly sure which ones came with it but they're so super cute. Um, I can't even tell what the brand on here is, but this is the kitchen set. I ordered the tea time set, the sewing one, of course, and the stationary one, beautiful. Then I got some other stickers. And like I said, some of these might be in the kit. I can't really remember which ones were in the kit. And then I added some. Then I also got these stickers, the plain deco. I got some neutral and blush dots. And I don't know what these are called, label stickers. I like those. And I got a new pack of the Kitta washi tape strips. And I think this came in the kit because I don't remember picking this one out. It's super cute. And I also ordered these two pasta pens or pasta markers. I can't remember what they're called, but they're kind of like, um, they're not really a marker. They're more like a pastel. I thought those would be fun. And this was the sheet that came with the little booklet. So you can see you just slide in your stickers and you can keep everything super neat and tucked away. And then whenever you want to use them in your planners or your journals, you just flip through your, your little sticker book and find the one that you want. So those were my little stationary orders that are just so exciting and I cannot wait to um, give you guys an update once I start working on my, or once I settle on how I wanna use my Hobonichi Weeks, I will share that with you because for anyone that maybe thinks these are too large, I think this is super handy and um, easy to carry around with you. So it's not so bulky and um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good year for my planners.
Wednesday. It's the following day. I ended up getting really busy last night or yesterday and I spoke so much that I thought I would just give you guys a bit of a break from me and pick up my camera today because I wanted to share some of my knitting with you. And otherwise, I've just been having a kind of a slow start to my day. I've got dinner in the crock pot. I am making, I think they're called French dip sandwiches. So I've got a roast or is it, I can't remember. I don't even know. I've seen this recipe for years and I just kind of threw it together based on a recipe I found online and I'm hoping it will be good and it will be a really easy dinner. I spent a little bit of time with my planners this morning because I haven't really done anything in them for the week yet and I just needed to kind of get back on track. And this afternoon I have some work to do. So I'm going to get some lunch ready for the kids and then try to get up into my studio so that I can start cutting some fabrics for the next batch of project bags. I have no idea when those will be ready because it's been a really busy few weeks with the kids back to virtual learning and just everyone being home. It takes me a while to readjust to the new schedules. So that's my goal for today. I will pull out some of my knitting to share. Oh, and I also wanted to share something else. In the last few weeks, I introduced a new bag into my shop. It is a smaller size of the Everything Leather Tote Bag, and I'm just calling this one the Small Leather Tote Bag. This was my original sample, and it's what I'm using for my purse right now. And I had a shop update, was it last week, I think, with all of the colors, and I decided to keep this one. I'm actually gonna bring it into my dining room. This is the burgundy color. And I really wanted to keep another one for myself and keep it either for a big knitting project or I think for right now, I'm actually going to put in a whole bunch of my planner supplies and pouches. So if I wanna bring them upstairs, I've got an easy bag to tote them around the house. So. I'm really happy that I kept this one. It was really hard to pick a color and they're just really easy to carry around if you don't need a huge bag. I do love a huge bag. I'm one of those people that just likes to carry everything possible in their bag with them. But with a lot less places to go right now and us being home a lot more, I thought it would be fun to do a smaller one. And then with all of the scrappy blankets and big sweaters and things, I thought it would also make a great project bag. So that is what I'm doing with this one. And I'm probably going to have another batch of most of the colors in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll see how that goes. And I always post information about my shop updates, like the details of it on my Instagram, on my profile page. And I also put it in the header of my website and all that info is down below if you're looking for me anywhere else you can just check the description box below so i think i'm going to tidy up some of the things that i left all around the main floor and while i'm doing that i will share some of my knitting projects with you my studio needs a little bit of a tidy up before i come in here this afternoon but i thought i would share some of the fabrics that i'm hoping to cut into either today or tomorrow I shared a couple of them on Instagram, but I'm really excited. I also added a blue that I found online and it just came yesterday. So these three paint swatch fabrics will be for small project bags. And then I ordered another um, Rifle Paper Company fabric. It's so beautiful. I just love their prints. It's a heavier canvas. It's a cotton canvas, I think. And this will be for my larger project bags. So. That is what's going to be in the next shop update, whenever that is. But my knitting projects, I am very excited. I've had a little bit of time to knit in the last few weeks and I managed to finish a project and also start and finish another one. So this is a beautiful skein of yarn that I found in my, um, in my stash from Chelsea Lux Yarns. It is the Lux Chunky and the color is Gingerbread House. And I think, I 
think I got this one last year. It is such a beautiful color. Maybe, yeah, there you can see it a little bit better that way. It is so beautiful. I decided to cast on a hat. I just felt like doing a little quick project and I found the Keaton hat on Ravelry. It's a Shannon Cook pattern um, or very Shannon and it just uses chunky weight. It's a really simple rib hat and I think it's beautiful. I am looking for more chunky in my stash right now so that I can make another one. There are quite a few sizes in this pattern and I have kind of a small-ish head, but I think I made the wrong size. Um, I thought I was making the small adult, but I think I actually made the, um, where is it? I, oh, here it is. I think I made the child teen version, but it's so beautiful and I have this gorgeous minty pom-pom to go with it. And there's someone in my family, I'm not gonna say, that has a birthday coming and I think it would be perfect for her. So I'll be sad to give it away, but I think she's truly knit worthy and would love it. So I need to give it a good block and attach the pom-pom, but I'm very excited that I finished a hat. It was just the project that I needed to, I don't know, I guess just refresh. I've had a lot of things on the needles and I kept running into issues with these socks and I think it was just indicative of where my head has been lately. And even though it's a simple vanilla sock, I showed these in um, Vlogmas quite a few times. They are my beautiful Advent socks, which were from The Cozy Knitter. It's the Advent skein for 2020. And I was putting, I was putting in the traditional heel flaps and I messed that up a few times and had to rip it back and lost stitches and just kept going back and back. Um, and then I actually did the same thing on the cuff of my second one, but in the end it all worked out. And this is the sock that I decided to do that really wonderful new pattern that I found through um, I think I found it through Cherie from the Ollie and Bella podcast. It is a rib kind of basic cuff and it's called Magic Heel Socks. It is from, is it Ottoman Acorn, I believe? I've just discovered her podcast too and she's lovely. I will put her information down below. I loved knitting this. I, I just had to go and answer the door and I forget what I was saying. I think it was that I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram about the fit of these and I haven't worn them for an extended period of time or out out because I don't really go anywhere and I still need to weave in the ends but I did wear them for a few hours the day that I finished them and I wore them around the house up and down the stairs and all over the place and they fit me really well. My socks are a little bit snug on me, which I like because I really don't like slouchy socks or when they fall down. I like them to be snug and stay in place. These seemed to be perfect. I just did my vanilla sock and put in the heel according to her pattern. But I think it's the same in her pattern. So I think it's a 64 stitch vanilla sock and I use a 2.25 millimeter needle and they fit me perfectly. I have a size eight shoe or foot, so I'm really happy with them. They fit really nice. I will definitely be making these Magic Heel socks again and I will keep you posted if and when I do finally get to wear these in my shoes and out and about. Maybe if I go grocery shopping, I will try them because that's about the only place I go anywhere. So those are my two finished objects. I am very excited about them and I will show you the knitting that I've been focusing on since finishing these. I have two whips that I'm currently working on. I still have my Land of Sweets cowl that I've only done a row or two more on in the last while because I was working on my other projects and I'm loving this. So I've kept this out because I really do want to work on it. 
but I've got it in my mind to work on some whips. I think it's just that time of year, and I know February is always a time where I'm trying to get projects off the needles. And I think Chelsea from the Chelsea Makes Patreon is also doing kind of like a, a make-along to finish projects right now. It's just a good time of year so that you can cast on new things. And even though there's a few things I really want to start, I really want to get a couple of them. I'm very motivated to get these off of my needles. This is a beautiful project that I've had going for quite some time. It is Kate's Poncho by Nice and Knit. I'm pretty sure this color is called Autumn, and I think it's DK. And it's going really well. I just have a few more inches to do. They're long. The rows are long right now because... It's actually quite bunched up on the needles and it gets wider and wider, but it's a really simple poncho. And I think I might have, I don't know, maybe four or five inches to go plus rib. So I'm just trying to keep this really close by so that I can pick it up whenever we're watching TV or if I just take a break in here. This is my current project that I'm really trying to focus on. And I think it's going well. And I'm just trying not to get distracted because I do want to pick up another pair of socks soon and I do want to work on this too. So I'm just kind of toggling between the two projects right now. I just got a package delivered and I thought I would share because I very unexpectedly decided to place an order with Hobonichi for something that was sold out everywhere else and I really just could not resist. So I decided that this was the year that I wanted to try doing the five year journal. I know this is going to be super hard to keep up, um, but I just felt like with everything going on in the world and with the pandemic right now, this might be a really good year to document and look back on and the kids are home and there's just so much going on. So I ordered the Hobonichi five year journal in the A6 size. I guess it comes with this pen because I did not order it. Looks like a food pen. I don't know if I said that right. So this is kind of exciting. It's in this beautiful yellow box and it's got a little pamphlet. Oh, it's so nice. So this is the 2021 to 2025 journal. I did not order a cover for it. I know it's a bit thicker than their usual A6, but I am really hoping that one of my A6 covers will fit it. If not, I think it's fine for now, but I'm very excited about this. And so this is how it is set up. Each day, so I guess this is May 30th. So on May 30th this year, I will write something in here. And then each year afterwards on that date, you can put in some kind of snippet or gratitude or what's going on in the world or in your life. And then you have this one side of the page that I guess you could fill in whenever you want. You could either extend it and do more for each day of each year or if there's a particular year where you're doing something really exciting on that day, you might want to put in a photo and some more details on the side. So I think that's probably what I will be doing. Um, and that would most likely work for me because I don't think I'll be documenting a whole day every day in here. But if something is going on or I really want to detail something a little bit more, I can write more on this side. So I'm really excited. I'm going to try to fill in as many days of January that I've missed so far. I've been making a few little notes to keep track of what's been going on. And I'm excited to try this. So wish me luck because this is going to be very challenging me, challenging for me to keep up every day for five years, but I'm going to take a stab at it.
it's 4 30 and i've kind of fizzled out so i was sitting and watching a soccer game for a bit with james and look at this mess i made this afternoon i was trying to film a stop motion and it was really fun actually but it took me a lot longer oh than i thought God. did someone score yeah <laughs> and um I started to lose the light, so I'm going to finish tomorrow, which means I'm just going to leave the table here. But I also thought I would share this really cool picture that I was searching for today. I had been binge watching The Crown over the holidays and loving it. And I remembered this photo that Glenn had somewhere tucked away. And so I dug it out. This is Queen Elizabeth and she has stopped and she's speaking to Glenn's late grandfather right here. He was a drum major in a pipe band. I don't know what year this was. I should probably ask Glenn's mom if she knows more about it. But I thought it was so nice, such a treasure to have. And so I'm kind of looking for the perfect spot for it in the house and I just haven't been able to find it yet. I think I might have to change the frame because something about this frame with this print is not working. I think I want a black frame just to make the photo pop a little bit, but that's my next little project. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video now. I'm going to go and check on the meat in the crock pot, shred up the roast, make a really easy dinner, maybe make a vegetable to go on the side and just have a quiet evening. I have spent so much time this week just cleaning, organizing, grocery shopping, and filming, and now I have to edit. So I'm hoping the rest of the week I can just spend some time in the studio and get some work done for the shop. So for now, I will say goodbye, and I will see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.